the sunbeam actually pointed something out and I kind of wanted to go and go over it to show that there's another, you know, there's multiple methods to do this kind of thing. Um, obviously, this won't necessarily work on every anti-cheat because some of them will have more in-depth method, you know, methods of um, dealing with trying to detect cheat engine and that kind of thing or even a debugger. Um, but in this case, it's just looking for cheat engines. So we've, you know, all we've got to do is stop that thread from being launched or make it return quickly. Um, but since, say if we didn't know it was using get proc address, um, the other thing we could know is it does display that message box that actually shows, um, you know, the prompt saying that, you know, the game is not compatible with cheat engine. So we could actually use that knowledge to find that thread. Uh, switch to this display here so I've got the game up and running again we really do want to make sure we make up some backups here so dot back so we can fall back to that if we just screw up horribly and then we're going to go on and prepare our one to be patched So basically from here it'll be much the same. We'll go ahead and launch X64 debugger here. And make sure you do launch the 64-bit version. And we'll go ahead and attach to the process. And load up, it'll end up pausing down here. And we just once again just want to keep hitting run past exceptions until we get it fully running again. You may even want to give it a little bit and make sure it doesn't hit another point where it's going to need to pause for a second. Because um, there are quite a few different things you're going to have to step past. But once we kind of get to a point to where it's running, and you go ahead and come back, oh, not threads, we want to come back over here to symbols. Um, make sure we're inside the mk11.exe module. Get that sorted alphabetically. And then, because it displays a message box, we can literally just look for the, the message box call here, or the reference to it. Paused again. Let's make sure we. And that's where, um, like I said, I'm just letting it go back and forth between the, you know, the main menu where it just says press start to start the game, and letting it run through the animation here of just showing the, you know, the idle animation. I guess you can call this. But back to 6040 debugger, so we can see we've got three imports here. Message box A, message box W, and message box, or, no, that's move file. Yeah, so we just got two here. So we don't necessarily know which one it is, but since message box aren't exactly displayed often, one may be for error messages and the other may be for that prompt. Um, but since we're hopefully not going to get an error message here, what we'll do is we can go ahead and just set a breakpoint on both of these real quick. So we toggle our breakpoints there and then now we can go ahead and open Cheat Engine again. So if you notice down here, it actually said, um, before I stop recording there for a second, it actually said that the um, breakpoint was deleted. Um, basically, it was because I'd already gone through just to make sure it worked. Um, I knew it kind of would, but I still just wanted to go through it before recording. Um, it already had the target, you know, the breakpoint set. Um, that's one of the things uh, X64 debug will do is you won't have to refine that spot and reset the breakpoint. So if you are having issues and you already set the breakpoint and you go back in and re-toggle breakpoint, it may be removing the breakpoint from it. Um, so at that point, 
you'll need to just kind of redo it again. Um, either reset the breakpoint or when you relaunch, don't reset the breakpoint. Uh, don't toggle the breakpoint since it'll still be there. And then you can go ahead and find that spot because it will, you know, pause on that breakpoint or break on it. Um, So that is one thing to keep in mind if you are having an issue. You may actually be, you know, have already created your breakpoint, and then when you go back into it, delete your breakpoint, and then it's not breaking on that. Um, again, I want to make sure we're fully running here. Actually, let it load up a, a fight here. Looks like we're fully running. And then again, we just want to come on down here and do just like I did, except this time we want to make sure it doesn't say breakpoint deleted. Um, so we select message box A. Yeah, so it's telling us it did set the breakpoint. And then message box W, and then we've set another one now. Now we can go ahead and open Cheat Engine. Process, process will pause so we can see it's actually for this prompt it's using message box A. Um, from there it's basically the, the same method here. We just want to go into our thread, select this one that's paused, and then go to thread entry. And if you've watched the other video you can see we're kind of at the exact same point we, we were at before. Um, from here it'll be the same method so we just want to Open file. Um, actually, navigate to where the exe is here. Oh, not assets. We want binaries, retail. And then go ahead and open that patch exe. It is 64 bit. And then basically let that get loaded up. And then here we're just going to want to go to copy and then copy file offset. And this way we can make it take advantage of that zero starting point. So here we can just say go to address, paste in that file offset. Um, you can actually see if you watch the other one, it's the same offset here. Um, if you're really having trouble, you could probably just put that in, at least on Windows 7. It may be slightly different on Windows 10, I'm not sure. But again, here we can see we're kind of in the same code block as the other one, or as uh, the x6040 bugger here um, so here we just want to patch this part of the exe just like we did before just go ahead and tell it return hit yes here so we can just put some no ops in there um, or I don't think they're really needed but it'll make sure that nothing gets confused um, and then from here we can just go ahead and save file and save it as that patch exe now, now doing it this method because we don't pause it before get proc address. If we just kill this thread, this won't work. This one you really do need to patch the exe to make it work right. Um, because if we just go ahead and kill this thread and then resume, we'll, we'll actually still get that same message box telling us that. Now this is pause the process, but anyway, that you know, you want to just killing a thread in this case really won't work. We need to actually patch the exe like we did there. But so at this point, we can go ahead and close that out. We really don't need it. We can close cheat engine out, and then again, we just want to move some stuff around here. Let's rename that to original copy our patch DXE so we can keep a backup of it. Um, in theory, if there was an update that didn't really add a whole lot, you can always just go back to this one, but you might even need to end up repatching the new EXE if there's an update. But then at this point, we can go ahead and launch this one, and we'll be able to open Sheet Engine and do whatever we want here. <coughs> But that's just to kind of illustrate there's, you know, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. 
Um, you just got to kind of gather what little bit of information you can get from the, the way it's detecting sheet engine and that kind of thing and, and figure that out. Um, we might even be able to look for the cheat engine, you know, where it actually puts the uses, stores the string of the cheat engine process name and set it up so we overwrite that with some arbitrary process name that will never get launched anyway. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that can be done. So then here we can see we can go in and launch cheat engine and it won't gripe or care or basically it won't know that cheat engine has been launched. Take a second longer to get attached again but and then everything will inject and it'll basically work much the same as it did before but I just kind of wanted to go over this and show you know what Sunbeam was talking about with using the message box it's just it's another way to do it and Again, I kind of used um, the other video that I showed that um, to know to get use get proc address. But if we didn't know that, this would be another method to use. <coughs> and it may even be that yeah, really shouldn't matter, but it may even be Windows 10. It for some reason they did something slightly different. You'll need to use the message box. I'm really not sure thinking most of the issues people were having that it's just not stepping through it enough not getting it to run fully before it hits any breakpoints but that's pretty much it for this video um hope it's helpful and have a good one